Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I'm gonna go over the different types of skin wounds. So let's get started. The skin wounds can be classified as being open or closed. So if we have an open skin wound, that means that that skin is no longer intact versus a closed wound where that skin is intact. First, let's go over closed skin wounds. Here we have a contusion. This is also known as a bruise, and it can occur whenever you have trauma to those underlying blood vessels, which causes discoloration of the skin. Now, a contusion can be tender, along with being a variety of colors, and the colors really depend on the person's skin tone and the stage of healing. So you could find that it's purplish, dark green, brown, or yellow. Next is hematoma. Now, this is similar to a contusion because it's caused by trauma but it tends to be more severe and in some cases may require medical intervention. Now the reason for this is because we have damage to those underlying vessels and that's causing blood to pull underneath the skin creating this hardened lump area which you're going to find usually with hematomas. So look at this word hematoma. The prefix heme means blood and then toma refers to a mass of something. So we have this like bloody mass underneath the skin. Then there's blister and this is a type of wound where we have a fluid filled pocket that forms forms underneath the epidermis of the skin, which again, that's the outer layer of the skin. And this fluid fill pocket can occur because we have friction that's occurred on the skin or an allergy or burn. And remember, this is gonna be a closed type wound because our skin is still intact. And finally, our last type of closed wound is frostbite. So this develops whenever someone has prolonged exposure to freezing temperatures, and it often affects the extremities like the fingers and the toes. And it can present as being dark purple or black. Now, in some cases of severe frostbite, it can actually affect the underlying tissues, which unfortunately will result in actually losing those tissues. Now let's talk about open wounds. So first up is abrasion. So this is like a scrape on that top layer of skin, the epidermis, and it's usually caused by friction. Now the appearance of this is gonna vary depending on what actually caused the friction. With this, there tends to be not a lot of bleeding, especially depending on the depth of it. However, it can be quite painful because those nerve endings are exposed. Next is laceration, and this is a wound that is caused by a sharp object or blunt trauma. And its appearance can be rather messy. It can be irregular, it can have various depths and sizes, and it's going to be quite bloody. In addition, it can be quite painful as well. Then we have incision. Now this type of wound may seem similar to a laceration, but this was actually, in most cases, intentionally created via a surgical instrument like a scalpel. So its appearance is going to be symmetrical and nice and neat compared to a laceration. Next are skin tears, and these are a type of skin wound that occurs because we have shearing or stretching of the skin beyond its limit, which leads to tears or flaps in the skin. And this can occur in patient populations who are experiencing thinning or fragile skin, which is common whenever a patient is using corticosteroids over a long period of time or an elderly patient because as we age, we lose the subcutaneous fat under our skin and we have less collagen or the pediatric population. And then next is a puncture wound. And just as its name says, this is a type of skin wound that occurs because some type of sharp, narrow object like a knife or a needle has punctured the skin. And then if we go further with our puncture wound, we're gonna end up with our next type, which is the penetrating wound. So this is where we go past the underlying skin into way deeper tissues. And this can occur with like a gunshot or some type of stabbing. Then there's avulsion. And this type of skin wound is pretty serious because we are actually removing our skin and its underlying tissue. Now this can happen in let's say like a severe car accident or some type of animal attack. Imagine a bear in the woods coming after you and just ripping off some of your skin. So with this type of wound injury, unfortunately it carries a high risk of infection. Then we have burns and this is a type of skin wound where we have damage to the skin layers from some type of energy source. And this energy source could be heat or chemicals. Now burns are categorized so we can have different levels or hence degrees of burns and this really depends on how much that energy source penetrated that specific layer of the skin. Now one important thing to know is that with lesser level burns like first degree burns these are considered closed wound burns because that skin's intact but as we progress to those other levels like second third and fourth degree those would be considered open wounds because that skin is no longer intact. 
So you wanna remember the different degrees of burns and what they affect. So with first degree burn, this is superficial. It affects only the epidermis. It's gonna be red, painful, warm, no blisters, and typically heals in seven days. Second degree burns, also known as partial thickness, affect the epidermis, dermis, and they can be painful, have blisters, red, swollen, and they may need grafting if severe. Third degree burns, also known as full thickness, will affect all the skin layers. The nerves are gonna be destroyed. They're not quite as painful because our nerves have been destroyed. They require grafting and they take months to heal and may have black slash yellow or escar. And then lastly, fourth degree burns, known as deep full thickness burns, all layers are gonna be destroyed. It's going to extend down to the muscle and bones. There won't be any pain. It's going to appear black or charred and it requires months of healing and grafting. Next, we have pressure injuries, also known as pressure ulcers. And these skin wounds develop from unrelieved pressure on those skin layers. And this pressure can come from a bony prominence on the body where that bony prominence is just hitting that hard surface or a medical device that's applying sustained pressure. And there are various stages of pressure injuries you want to be familiar with. For instance, stage one, this is where our skin is intact. So we have a closed wound, but it's going to be red and it will not blanch when it's pressed. Stage two is where we have partial loss of skin with no fatty tissue visible, and it may form a blister or a shallow ulcer. Stage three is full skin loss. Fatty tissue will be visible. We can have edges that can be rolled, but bone, muscle, or tendon is not visible. Stage four is where we have full skin loss, where it actually exposes the bone, muscle, tendon, or ligaments. And then we can have one where it's unstageable. And this is a full thickness ulcer covered by sloth or escar, and the depth cannot be assessed. And then lastly, we have venous and arterial wounds. So these type of wounds are actually considered chronic wounds because they don't heal properly due to underlying circulation problems. So first up are venous ulcers, and these form due to poor venous circulation. Here the venous system fails to drain deoxygenated blood back to the heart, which causes blood to pool in the extremities, and this leads to tissue damage, hence our ulcer formation. The most common affected areas are the medial lower legs, so the inner part of the calf, and the medial ankle, so we're talking about the inner ankle. These ulcers are going to be swollen with high amounts of drainage, a deep pink or red granulation tissue in the wound bed, and the edges are going to be irregular and typically shallow. Plus, the surrounding skin will be dry and itchy and may have pigmentation. Also, pain will be present. Then, with arterial ulcers, they're going to form due to poor arterial circulation. So, the arterial system fails to deliver fresh oxygenated blood to specific tissues in the body, which causes them to die. The most common areas affected by these are going to be found on the toes, the top of the feet, and the lateral ankles. These ulcers have very little drainage. They're going to be pale and contain necrotic tissue and have a deep punched out shape with very well-defined edges. Additionally, the skin surrounding the ulcer can be very shiny and hairless, and these ulcers are quite painful. Okay, so that wraps up this video on the different types of skin wounds. If you'd like to watch more videos in this series, you can access the link in the description below.